Cheshire City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. Age and declining health and some things you can do about that. I think lots of us would like to know more about that. So welcome for our third time, Barry. Uh, because I'm almost blind. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's good to see you all. Uh, about my talk, well, I don't think I need to do it because you're all looking so young and healthy. Uh, okay, uh, today's talk then is about uh, growing old and what we can expect to happen to our lives. Yeah. So, do you want to feel better? Do you want to live longer? Do you want to have a better quality of life? Yeah? Yeah. But how committed are you to that? How willing are you to set out on the road to a better life? To better health? There's no magic bullet, no pharmaceutical pill that will give you instant good health. But I have another question. How many of you trust the medical profession. Show of hands, please. Well, most of you have the same kind of belief I have. Well, this is the current situation in America according to a number of studies by the John Hopkins University, who are the world's leaders in research into preventive medicine. The healthcare system in America is the third biggest killer in the world. Now, that's a shock, huh? What a shock. According to these statistics, you double the chance of dying by receiving medical care than by having a stroke. Should it be like that? What is missing? Something is missing. Now this is a functional decline trajectory which happens with aging, what you can expect. If you look at the blue line, in your youth and your, and your early adulthood, there's a steep climb to perfect health or, and fitness, and then it plateaus and there's a slow decline in middle age till you get to about 65 and there's a sharper decline, follow the blue line, and you notice it crosses a line called the mobility limitation line. That means you become infirm. You stagger, you fall. Now if you follow the red line, that's because that's accelerated decline and it may be because of a serious illness, an accident, or your lifestyle. Drug abuse, alcohol abuse, you're gonna get a disability. Most disabilities are through an accident. Now look at that green line. Wouldn't you like to be on that green line? Well, typical age-related diseases or illness may be heart disease. And by the way, I don't believe that heart disease is the biggest killer in the world. Uh, and you will find out my opinion, it's just an opinion, towards the end of this presentation. There's bone disease, muscle atrophy, skeletal and tissue inflammation, and cognitive decline. Now heart disease kills one in three of us. About 82% of people who die of coronary disease are 65 or older. The average age of people at the time of their first, death, uh, first heart attack, I said 65 or older for males and 72 years for females. So take a look around the room. Take a look at you, the people with you. Some of them may not be here next year. <laughs> now a common problem in the elderly is osteoporosis, especially with ladies. That's loss of bone density caused by a low mineral content. It's a health condition that weakens bones, making them brittle, more likely to break. It develops slowly over several years and is often only diagnosed when a fall or sudden impact causes a bone to break. And if you look, if I can find this, at the honeycomb in there, that is osteoporosis. Now as we age, this tends to happen with most people, 
our muscles atrophy. It's a natural process, and they grow smaller. Now, this may lead to a loss of coordination and balance. For example, if you was to take your shoes off and stand on one leg with, with your thigh horizontal to the ground, if you cannot keep your balance for at least five seconds, then your hip stabilizer muscles are weak. This leads to balance and coordination problems and the potential for falls. Each year, 36 million falls occur among older adults, age 65 or older. One out of five falls cause serious injury, such as broken bones or a head injury. Over 950,000 older adults are hospitalized because of a fall or injury every year, resulting in a head, wrist, or hip fracture, mainly due to muscle atrophy. This is something that's not really looked at. The lack of muscle density is not really looked at by the medical profession. Another common problem is inflammation. Now, this is a big issue. Inflammation is one of the biggest killers in the world. There's all sorts of things which cause inflammation. This diet is a typical one, which will give you insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a cause of metabolic syndrome, the biggest killer. You can get it, insulin resistance will cause obesity, which in turn causes inflammation. Injury, of course, will cause inflammation. Uh, smoking, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, lifestyle, that inf causes inflammation. And of course, infection. Now, these, these uh, inflammation will lead to cardiovascular disease, cancers, and Alzheimer's are similar. Many things may cause cognitive disorders. One of them is a misshaped protein in your brain. Amyloid or amyloid in the brain. It's uh, the way the protein folds. Now, is there a way in which we can slow down this decline in health? That would be really nice. Can we, can we get onto that green track that I spoke about earlier? The answer is yes, we can, but we cannot stop the decline. Bad news is you are going to die sometime. A change of lifestyle is called for. We need to cut out highly processed food and eat nutrient dense food. And I'm sorry to say I've got to use an obscenity, exercise. Most of us find that exercise is an obscenity. We can also take a supplement which will augment our diet and lifestyle. Now this is an important statement. You have to remember that evolution adapted us over millions of years to consume certain nutrients. Any nutrient is missing, then your metabolism cannot work at optimum, which can then weaken you, leaving you prone to various diseases. The gentleman you see there is a prehistoric man. He's never, his, the likes of him never suffered cardiovascular disease, diabetes, or any disease which affects modern man. And what I found out recently is quite interesting. In the Peabody Museum in Harvard University, there's a collection of skeletons and skulls. And all these skulls, are, the teeth are intact. Cannot say that about modern man. So we are doing something wrong. So take vitamin C, for example. If you do not get enough, you will get scurvy, though it's very rare these days. But you will get a lowered resistance to disease. Now, today's diet is deficient in many nutrients, and that is a medical fact. Here are seven common deficiencies. Calcium, vitamin D, potassium, iron, especially with ladies, Vitamin B12, especially with vegetarians and vegans. Folate and magnesium. Now we shall take a look at these mentioned diseases and deficits in our diet and what we can do in addition to our lifestyle to combat these problems. Excesses should also be considered as too much of anything will have a negative effect. There's a list there of some of the nutritional deficiencies. We're going to take a look at hair. And you will see that there are many vitamins and minerals important for taking care of your hair. So how many do you need to take care of your heart and your lungs and your liver? I'm talking about hair. 
So these vitamins and minerals are very important. Now generally, one in three of us die from heart attack caused by calcium deposits in the coronary arteries. So what can we do about that? Well, firstly, I strongly, strongly recommend that you take a coronary artery scal cal calcium? calcium score test, or CAC for short, as this is the best predictor of heart disease. All of us are likely to have calcium deposits, so we need to slow down how quickly this de de deposition takes place. Now, calcified plaque right, is measured on a score of zero to about 400. Zero, you're very young and you're fit. 400, I'm sorry, did I say four earlier? 400, I meant. If you have a score of 400, it's, oh my God, call me a priest. Uh, my calci uh, calcium score is about 11 to 100. My personal calcium score is 107. So not too bad for a 76-year-old. Yeah. Calcium is needed by the heart to control its rhythm. Maybe some of you were not aware of that. Calcium carries the electric charge, which will stimulate the muscle to contract and pump the blood. So it controls its rhythm, and it's also needed by the bones to provide bone density. But too much calcium leads to calcium deposits and heart attacks. The white spots you see in the middle of the heart there, that's calcium. Now what is meant to happen is that you absorb calcium into the blood. so it can regulate the heart rhythm. Any excess calcium should be deposited in the bones. But this does not seem to be happening. Why? Why is it being deposited in the heart and coronary arteries, but not in the bones? Well, the process should be that under the influence of vitamin D3, calcium is absorbed into the gut because the body cannot absorb a stone. It can't digest a stone. It has to be changed into something else. And it passes from the gut into the bloodstream, and from there, some of it goes to regulate the heart, and the rest should be made into osteocalcin. The body can absorb osteocalcin. And that osteocalcin will be deposited in the bones. But the current paradigm is missing a vital step. And that is osteocalcin which promotes bone mineralization, and it needs a core factor to activate it. It's not going to be easy for you people to see, but that's, that is vitamin D going in uh, calcium, and it goes through a goes through a process of some going into the, the blood for the heart, and then some going into the bones, but you need vitamin K. You need vitamin K. Now there's many types of vitamin K. Vitamin K1 deals with coagulation of the blood, should you get a cut. Vitamin K2 has very different uh, things to do. And there's something like 14 sub-varieties. Number seven is the one you should be looking for, and it might be called menaquinone seven or MK7. Vitamin K2, MK7. It's a simplified diagram. On the left, you see the intestine with the calcium, and the yellow arrow there shows the absorption of vitamin D2. That will make osteocalcin, but then you need uh, vitamin K2 to activate that, to deposit it in the bones. Now, according to the World Health Organization and the F Food and Agricultural Organization, we only get between 5 and 20% K2 from our diet. So how do we ensure we get adequate D3 and K2? Well, one way is to supplement. In addition to a diet of whole foods and the exclusion of highly processed foods, we can supplement. Now this particular supplement combines D3 and K2 in one convenient capsule. Now menaquinone or MK7 is the most potent form of vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is an essential component of your diet. And that particular one will have something like 80 milligrams, I think it says, 
75% of your daily needs. My cardiologist informed me that another very good way to heart health is to take coenzyme Q10. It's another cofactor. CoQ10 works in the mitochondria of the heart muscle to provide energy. Some of you may not have heard of mitochondria before, so what exactly is the mitochondria? Well, within the cells of your body, there are various things which do various functions. And the, in the cell is the mitochondria, and that is the powerhouse of the cell. That is where energy stored in your food is converted into heat or work. Mitochondrial dysfunction has long been linked to cardiovascular health, and CoQ10 is found at high levels in cardiac cells. Supplementation with CoQ10 has been shown to improve measures related to heart failure, slow the progression of atherosclerosis, which is arterial disease, and to prevent the oxidation of LDL cholesterol. Now, we've all been worried about our LDL, but CoQ10 prevents the oxidation of LDL, which is the bad LDL. Now, if you look at the tomato, we all know a tomato, we're all familiar with how it decays. Well, your body's cells will also decay in a similar manner if they oxi get oxidative stress. Now, I was going to read out all the things there, but uh, I'm, I cannot see them at the moment because I am blind in one eye. I've just had an operation, and the other eye is a low man's eye, so uh, it's not to see too good either. So if you can read all this, should we give it a go? Okay, cancer, vision loss, heart disease, arthritis, stroke, respiratory disease, immune deficiency, emphysema, Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, fast aging, obesity, hair loss, other inflammatory or ischemic conditions. That's what you get if you don't use an uh, antioxidant. Antioxidants are so important. Now this shows a biochemical pathway. Right? And I've missed out the why there in you. You can see that statins is what the medical profession give you to prevent LDL damage. Right? You can see that it goes into the biochemical pathway above mevalonate and approximately 35 steps later, it inhibits the production of cholesterol and also inhibits the production of CoQ10, the very thing that prevents damage to your LDL. You've got to ask yourself, is that the right approach? Why, why statins then? Why statins? Because it's working against the, 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 the CoQ10. Why? Profit. That's why. Now, cholesterol is needed to make vitamin D. If you expose your skin to sunlight, you will make vitamin D. The uh, vitamin D molecule and cholesterol molecule are almost identical. Your hormones, all your hormones are made from cholesterol including testosterone, guys. Do you really want to lose your t testosterone? No, no, there's a guy down there. No, no, no. no. <laughs> now, the brain is very susceptible to oxidative damage due to its high fatty acid content. And as an antioxidant, CoQ10 has the potential to reduce the damage and promote brain health. CoQ10 may also help reduce the mitochondrial dysfunction in the brain which is associated with the onset and development of uh, neurodegenerative diseases. Pretty good stuff, pretty... The, all this is from the medical profession and this from scientific studies. So CoQ10, you gotta take it every day, guys. You don't get enough of it in your diet. Now, in addition, in addition, the recent studies suggest that taking a vitamin D supplement could help in the prevention of dementia. Hey, I wish I'd known that about five or six years ago, because last year my sister died of vascular dementia. I miss her a lot. Now, your brain is about 25% docosa hexaenoic acid, or DHA for short, which is an omega-3 fatty acid. 
Now this product contains CoQ10. In addition to heart health, CoQ10 is a potent antioxidant which is needed by every cell in your body to support growth and maintenance. It also plays a key role in energy production and as such can help support the body's function in a wide range of areas. Guys, improve physical performance? I think you know what I mean. Yeah. Just think of the bedroom. It improves dental health, brain health, uh, and fertility, heart health and fertility. And the, the supplementary fact there will show that it contains CoQ10. Now osteoporosis is basically the lack of calcium in the bones. Bones are made from calcium phosphate and collagen. Collagen is a protein. And as it's not being made bioavailable, it remains in the bloodstream and can be deposited in the coronary arteries, causing heart attacks. Now the result is a severe loss in bone density and an increase in potential fractures of the hip as the neck of the femur takes 100% of your body weight with each step. Taking calcium supplements alone is not the complete answer. If it were, we would not have people with osteoporosis dying of coronary heart disease. Osteoporosis, the medical profession will disagree with me here, Osteoporosis is not a lack of calcium. It is the inability to use the calcium that you have in your system already. The answer again is D3 and K2. This is a two for one. This one product can help reduce the risk of heart attacks if it's taken early enough, and it increases bone density. So it's taking the calcium out of the blood so it's not being deposited, and it's putting it in the bones. Now, it's worth noting that vitamin K2 is fat-soluble, meaning that you should ideally take it with a meal or a drink that contains fat. Short story. Some years back, I was unlucky enough to get a total knee replacement, which means cutting a piece of my knee out and replacing it with some kind of metal and some synthetic substance. Some years later, I was unfortunate enough to get my hip smashed by somebody on a motorbike running into me. So I, I, I now have a pin in my hip, and I have a synthetic knee. Right. Two different doctors, two different hospitals prescribed calcium. That was good. Um, vitamin D3, hey, that's also good. K2, no. No mention of K2. So. If I wasn't putting that calcium that they give me in, into my bones, was I depositing it in my coronary arteries? Makes you think. Muscle atrophy. Atrophy is the decay of muscle. As we age, our muscles get smaller and our body gets weaker as our ability to synthesize protein to make muscle is reduced. And it's a very important thing, muscle density. It's not given enough attention to by the medical profession. Now, as we age, we need to increase our protein intake. And to optimize this protein, we need to ensure we get all the essential amino acids to break down the consumed protein for bioabsorption and to stimulate hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is the opposite to atrophy. It is the building of muscle. Ladies, your flabby, floppy pancake arms are not a result of weight gain. That's, this is what you tend to believe or a loss of elasticity in the skin, though that may be a, a contributing factor, it is because the underlying tissue, the muscle, has atrophied and it shrinks back, resulting in less surface area of muscle for the fat to adhere to. If you look at this brown here, that is a muscle, and this area here is a layer of fat. When this muscle shrinks back, that fat will hang down loose. And that is the result of atrophy. Go back. Now, I'm, I'm going to be a bit bold here now, and uh, I'm approaching 77. Right? There's no hanging muscle, uh, no hanging fat there. In fact, there's quite a dense density of muscle. I exercise, well, before I had the operation, I was exercising every day. I am 
They say you cannot build muscle when you're an old man. I'm building muscle. Some years ago, I was 104 kilos with a 44 inch waist. I am now about, I'm still basically the same shape, just smaller. I'm now about 85 kilo with a 36 inch waist. Exercise, diet, so important. In addition to muscle loss due to aging, lack of exercise will cause the muscle to atrophy. As you see this guy here, he's broke his leg and he's had it in a plaster cast for a long time. If you do not exercise, you will lose it. You will lose your muscle. Right. And that becomes evidence when you hold your arm up like that and it's all hanging and floppy. Now, muscle atrophy, it's considered that 50 grams of protein per day is a minimum requirement for an adult, and a global survey was conducted to see if this requirement was met. In this study, 103 countries were evaluated to see if they averaged the daily consumption of this 50 grams of protein, and it can be seen that most of the countries exceeded this 50 grams a day. But, and there's always a but, When you take into account the inability to digest the cellulose content of plant-sourced proteins, most of the countries fall short of the daily recommendation. Now the color green, that's plant-sourced protein, and the, the browny color is animal-sourced protein. So we don't meet our daily requirement. And there's another but, a double but. Now when you take into account that all plant source food is deficient in one or more essential amino acids, which means the digested proteins cannot be fully utilized, the shortfall will be even greater, and none of the 103 countries surveyed met their due requirements. Uh, I'm not sure, but I believe the US and Europe are in there somewhere. I couldn't find that when I read the report. In the human body, there are something like 20 amino acids that function as building blocks of proteins. Nine of these are absolutely essential. You must consume them in your diet because the body cannot make them. While five are considered non-essential because they can be made by the human body. The remaining six are conditional, required only at certain conditions. Life conditions. Now the following three slides are from clinical trials conducted by Dr. Stuart Phillips, a professor at McMaster University. I think that's in Toronto, I believe. In the role of protein in hypertrophic gains in the elderly. Don't let these graphs worry you. Science has shown that this is the amount of protein per kilo of body weight per meal that you should eat. So that is here, 0 0.25 grams of protein per kilo of body weight per meal. And that should give you an average of 20 grams of protein per meal. Now if you eat less than 20 grams, you can see there's a sharp climb from zero up to, from A to C. But from, from C to another C, oh, it should, should be D perhaps, um, there's very little to be gained if we eat more than 20 grams. Now this graph shows the body's response to protein muscle synthesis for low and high protein diets with or without the amino acid leucine, something which I take. The muscle gain with leucine is even more pronounced when resistance training or exercising. Here we have somebody at rest, or two people at rest, one eating a low protein diet and one read, eating a high protein diet, and their average muscle synthesis is about, I would say about 1.7. 
If they take the, this, the amino acid leucine, it goes up to about 1.65. But if they do resistance training, yeah, it's up to about 1.9 now. Exercise is the biggest stimuli, stimuli for building muscle. Not your diet. Your diet will support that. But exercise is so important. He also provided this important note about an urban myth. Many people, no doubt some of you here, would believe that eating animal source protein or high protein at every meal damages the kidneys. There's absolutely no data for that. Absolutely none, according to the World Health Organization and the Food and Agricultural Organization. There's absolutely no data. But it's widely believed, typically with vegetarians and vegans. So how do we increase hypertrophy? Well, again, we can use supplements. We can take a protein supplement as well as using amino acid supplements. The amino acid which stimulates hypertrophy is leucine, and in this particular supplement facts, you've got 1,500 grams per serving. It also contains lysine. Now, lysine converts uh, amino acids to protein. Leucine converts protein into muscle. So they all work in concert. So you need an optimized ratio of all essential amino acids, branch chain amino acids and electrolytes to support muscle strength and function. To help maintain lean muscle mass, boost stamina and recovery and promote healthy energy and focus. Now I know one, at least one gentleman here who takes arginine. All right, so let's have a quick look at that. The body changes arginine into nitric acid, and nitric acid will, uh, uh, um, oxide, I beg, your, I beg your pardon, nitric oxide, it's known as a, a, a vasal uh, dilator. It expands the arteries. It can lower your blood pressure. Um, so rather than taking blood pressure medicine, perhaps you should be taking arginine. Now a complete protein will give your body the maximum amount of nutrition, and if you look at the supplementary facts there, it contains all the amino acids, it contains all the, um, sorry, the vitamins, and it's got uh, things like um, uh, phosphorus, uh, magnesium, magnesium, it, we're missing magnesium in our diet, and it's a big thing. I'd like to issue a cautionary note at this point. It's a personal opinion, all right? Many people will disagree. A vegetarian and a vegan diet is not for the, the elderly. Certainly not for me. You simply cannot get enough protein and other nutrients without supplementation. If you have supplementation to stay a vegan, then it's not a vegan diet, is it? This is a letter from a lady who wishes to remain anonymous. I was on a 100% plant-based diet for nearly three years. Yes, that meant my plate was full of whole fruits and vegetable grains and legumes. I excluded all animal products. And initially I felt amazing. But earlier this year, things started to change. I started off way less energy, completing even the smallest of tasks had become a struggle. I was critically low in iron. Not only that, I was also very low in nutrients, including vitamins B12, vitamin A, vitamin D, and zinc. That's the risk you run if you were a vegan. If you were a vegan, you really got to look at your diet to try and get the nutrients that are missing in plant source food. This is where they are from the news, and I thought this is shocking. A vegan woman convicted of murder in a malnutrition death of a young son was sentenced Monday to life in prison. Sheila O'Leary, whose family followed a strict vegan diet, was convicted in June 2022 on six charges. First degree murder, aggravated child abuse, aggravated manslaughter, child abuse and two counts of child neglect in the death of her son, Ezra. 
Investigators said the couple told them the family ate only raw fruit and vegetables, although the toddler was also fed breast milk. The 18-month-old boy weighed 17 pounds or 8 kilos and was the size of a 7-month-old baby when he died of malnutrition. How can a mother allow that to happen? The Cape Coral couple of two other children, ages three and five, were also malnourished. Investigators said a fourth child had been returned to a biological father due to an earlier malnutrition case in Virginia. So what has this got to do with older people? Well, I'm trying to illustrate how important nutrients are. Now, Sheila O'Leary, in my opinion, murdered her child. Put, as surely as putting a gun to the child's head and pulling the trigger. Some may say, oh, she was negligent. But for her, it was a conscious, willful, and deliberate act. That makes it murder. At the very least, manslaughter. Just reflect on that a moment. So what's it got to do with us elderly people? Well, it shows that if you do not get all the right nutrients, you're going to have a tough time in, in your later years. Skeletal and tissue inflammation. Acute pain inflammation is necessary. We don't believe that, but it's necessary. It tells the body there's something wrong and may need repair. If you bump into the corner of a table, you got a hematoma on your leg, a, a bruise, right? You get inflammation. That's the body's natural response to an injury. And it tells the, the uh, mechanism of your body to repair itself. But what do we do? Ah, we reach for some kind of paracetamol or something. But the, the inflammation is necessary. If you take the paracetamol, you will heal, but slow, more slowly, possibly. Now, chronic pain and inflammation is something else. It's debilitating and can last you for a very long time. Chronic inflammatory diseases are the number one cause of sickness and death in the world. In fact, more than 50% of all deaths can be contributed to inflammation-related diseases, such as, such as heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, kidney and liver diseases, and more. Now, the current paradigm, this is what the medical profession will do, they will give you some kind of synthetic drug. Paracetamol, for example. This can de definitely damage your kidneys, as more than 18 in one day will cause damage. But you doctor that never tells you that, huh? This product uh, is an anti-inflammatory um, supplement, in inflammation management supplement. Formulated by one of the world's top immunologists, a Dr. Heather Volpe, Live Goods Factor 4 is the first and only inflammation management supplement formulated with four of the world's most powerful and anti-inflammatory ingredients. You've got fish oil, your omega-3s, DHA, right, EPA, coenzyme Q10, which we should all be taking anyhow, and garlic to help you control and even reverse inflammation. It's already advanced. Now, there's strong evidence that the decrease in arterial inflammation will stabilize arterial plaque. This means the risk for a heart attack will be reduced. Now, the risk is not so much about having plaque. It's more to do with having soft plaque. Sorry which mixes, uh, and the plaque rupturing, the soft plaque rupturing, and it's the contents within the plaque which mixes with the blood to cause a clot, which immediately blocks the coronary arteries and sudden death. So our aim should be to reduce calcification inflammation. Now there is a doctor who can give you lots of information on this, this is soft plaque, and it ruptures, and the contents go into the blood, which is an aqueous solution, and it forms a clot. Totally blocks your coronary arteries. There's no return from that. If you took factor four, perhaps that would help prevent that. 
Now, Thailand has a big air pollution problem at the best of times. The result is respiratory tract and lung inflammation that can lead to cell death. Can you say that you do not really need an anti-inflammatory medication of some kind? I don't think we should be taking it every damn day. Now then, you may ask, all of you may ask, why supplement? Why not eat whole foods for the vitamins? Because after all, that's what we were designed to do. Yeah, well, that would work in a perfect world, but plant source food has been genetically modified to increase yield and profit, raising the sugar content of fructose. The body's cells cannot use fructose. Only the liver can metabolize fructose, and that will convert it to fat and put it on you. Hips. The ground has been depleted of magnesium, which is an essential nutrient. And it's not being replaced. Resulting in plant source food being less nutrient dense. And there's a lot of interest in this, where our food is less nutrient dense than it used to be 100 years ago. I don't remember 100 years ago. Anyhow, cattle and poultry are being fed grain and not grass and it injected with antibiotics, which we absorb. Besides killing our bad bacteria, it's killing our good bacteria also. It's antibacterial. It doesn't differentiate between good and bad bacteria. In short, our food has been adulterated. Why? Well, for profit, obviously. Do I use these products? Yep, I do now. Pr but previously, I used the individual vitamins. I'd buy, a bot I'd buy a bottle of coenzyme Q10, I'd buy a bottle of vitamin C, I'd buy a jar of zinc or something like that. My bathroom shelf looked like Boots the Chemist. And I have researched the benefits of these individual uh, contents of, the, of these products and found that science has proven they have benefits. Also, they now combine together in a convenient form, negating the requirement of so many bottles, so many vitamins, which also means it's more economical. Now, since using these products, I have more energy. I ex exercise most mornings prior to my operation. Quite vigorously, I would exercise for about two to three hours. But I still do not feel tired and worn out throughout the day, as I still have reserves of energy. So, do you want to feel better? Live longer? No response? Oh, right. We, we go home now then. Uh, right. Did you commit to travel the road to feeling better? No? Right. And possibly live an extra seven to ten years? By the way, I, I do not give any guarantees for an extra 10 years. And if you, if you die be, after, before the 10 years, you don't come and complain to me. Right? So did you commit? If not, go home now. Go and sit on your sofa and reach for the TV remote. If you chose to travel the road to good health, the next slide may be the most important one you will ever see in your life. Bold statement, huh? To purchase these and other exciting products which are up to 75% less expensive than other compatible products, please visit my website. Take the tour, have a look around. You do not have to commit to anything. Just take a look. But if you were to join, the savings are even greater. Go to livegoodtour.com forward slash Barry Jones. And remember I said about I don't believe that heart disease is the biggest killer in the world? Hmm. The biggest killer in the world is not heart disease, it's apathy. Lack of response, lack of commitment. You're ill, but you're too lazy. Oh, sorry, not personally, I'm not being personal yet, sorry. <laughs> You just don't want to do anything about it. You may be suffering a lot. And there's things you can do naturally 
to offset that. I'm not saying you're going to be cured, right? But you can offset a lot of your problems by having the right vitamins and minerals. Now, we, me included, we are too lazy to take control of our lives, too lazy to get off our rear end and learn, learn about these things. Our bodies and our brains are stagnating. Right? Look at me, I'm 77. Right? I'm fit. I probably could walk, out walk at least 80% of you all. I probably could outlift probably 80% of you all. That's because I've taken control of my life. Now, you might not believe me. In fact, I don't want you to believe me. Please don't believe me. Go home, get your computer out, and research those facts. Research what I have told you. And you'll come back with, Mr. Barry, you was right. Mm, sorry, sorry. Here are some of the products which are available. I take this one and this one. I take the amino acids and I take protein. These are supposed to be good. In fact, they are sold out at the moment. There's such a demand. They are various um, uh, uh, phenols and things that um, in plants were supposed to be very beneficial. I've not tried them yet, so I can't. They sold out. Right. Now, I hope I was able to explain clearly that it's absolutely essential to consume your vitamins and minerals, and that they can be expensive. So why not buy them 75% cheaper? And I hope I managed to show you that they work in concert with each other. You would benefit more from taking them in an optimized ratio. You can, I thought I'd put this on pause. <laughs> you can, if you clicked on that with your phone, you could actually go straight to my website. Or you can go live, go to a dot com, Addy Jones, forward slash Barry Jones, or www dot Barry Jones. Do you need that back on? Oh, it's gone, the slide's finished. So I hope I've managed to show you a few things. If that you would like to take the tour, my associate and I, we have uh, literature down here, we have business cards with the link on if you wish to have them. Uh, or you can just use that link here. It took me ages to work out how to use that. I'm, I'm, I'm not a computer kind of guy. Uh, so. I'd like to thank you all for coming and listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> questions, I guess, huh? Is there questions? Hang on, Barry. I want to remind everybody, just ask one question and don't go into your life history. That way we can kind of share the questions. So we'll start the questioning over here. Uh, thank you, Barry. Fantastic. A uh, friend of mine, very fit guy, his calcium score is something like 596. Is there any way that he can reduce his calcium score? Some people say yes, right? But I am not, I'm not convinced entirely but what I can tell you, if you try and remember this name, write it down. Dr. Ford Brewer, right, he has studied this subject intensively because he had a calcium score and he claims to have reversed it. Right. Now, I'm currently doing an experiment on myself. As I said, I was 107. So I'm taking MK7, right, and I've doubled up the dose Right, throughout the day, and in a few months, I will take another calcium test to see if it's actually reduced. So, personally, I, I, I don't know. Thank you for your question. Thank you. On your left. 
Thank you. Very interesting talk. Thank you. Um, so what's your opinion on one glass of wine a day? Is that good for you or not? Well, a bottle's a glass, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they do say it's good. They do say that the phenols and whatever is in red wine, red, 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 red something? Was it? No, yeah, they say that is good. Um, I probably take more than a glass a day. I'm probably, I'm probably uh, defeating the object of it. <laughs> Um, do you have any advice on when to take the supplements and take them all at once with food, without food, morning, evening? Any any advice well, on they, that? They would normally say on the label, but uh, I tend to take mine in the morning after after breakfast. Um, the kind of um, like amino acids, for instance, right? That, that, that helps to build muscle. Uh, you have with you food. You can economize and do it once a day, or you can take every meal. There is no adverse side effects. Does that answer your question? OK. Barry, thank you for making me look good. <laughs> wonderful talk. A third wonderful talk from you. Thank you so much. It's so thorough. And uh, I wish uh, doctors uh, could come, more doctors came and listened to your talk, mate. Uh, I will say this. Um, firstly, I'm the guy that takes uh, pro-arginine every day. I take it at night, and uh, there's a whole little story I could, stories I could tell about that. I very strongly recommend the benefits of pro-arginine. It does help your blood, but it's also um, it, it's turned into nitric oxide. It also nitric oxide is involved in the firing of your brain and stuff. So it's a very very important substance. The one observation I will make is I noticed that factor four, which sounded so great does have turmeric in it. Now, I started taking turmeric at one stage as an anti-inflammatory. It was organically grown. And I, I got a cut stone in the kidney when I was 18, right? Nobody gets them at that age. And as I'm starting to take it, my left kidney starts to ache. And apparently, turmeric does have the one of the two substances that tends to be turned into kidney stones. And so I stopped taking it, and the kidney ache went away. And also, I, then I shared that with another guy who'd had a stone in the kidney, and he'd started taking turmeric. He said, oh my god, I'd started taking turmeric, and my kidneys are aching. So that's just a bit of a caveat for people who have kidney issues. Otherwise, the factor four looks fantastic. Yeah, um, the substance he's talking about, the stones, 75% of all kidney stones are caused by calcium oxalate. Now, certain foods are high in calcium oxalate, such as beets. Now, beets make nitric oxide as well. If you eat beetroot, you know, that helps make nitric uh, oxide as well. But it's high in uh, calcium oxalate. Now, if you're going to take, if you have a kidney stone problem, then you should consult your healthcare practitioner before taking this supplement. But you have to remember it's, it's a, probably a minority Right. Some people are more subject to getting these problems than other people. Right. But so if you're going to supplement on something which is high in calcium oxalate, then you're going to have to possibly lay off the food which is high in calcium oxalate. You know, everything is a balance after all. Yep, that, okay. Interesting talk. Um, I'm 83. I've been exercising for the last 20 years, and I take supplements. But the one thing you skipped over quickly was zinc. Can you explain the importance of zinc generally? Well, well zinc body? has many functions in the body. Um, I can't give you one specific cause, but uh, these minerals, right, they are not vitamins, and uh, a lot of them are cofactors in something, right? Because some things do not work. It's like a light. If you don't flick the switch, the light doesn't go on. Well, that's what a cofactor does, is flick that switch. And a lot of these substances do that, you know, like CoQ10, for instance. Um, now, um, oh, I'm trying to think of a good example again. A lot of these minerals, besides being important in um, protecting your immune system, like zinc is important for the immune system. Right? 
these substances form an electrolyte. You know, it's, it's not just salt that is electrolyte. You know, an electrolyte is your battery fluid for your body. It's what allows the electric charges to flex a muscle. And the most important ones are sodium right, and potassium, and then magnesium to a lesser degree. Right? And if I may just I, uh, go off track a little bit, when your doctor tells you to cut down salt, is he actually correct? The best thing to do is cut out highly processed food. But you need salt every day, because every time you urinate, you will lose your salt. You lose your sodium, right, in particular. Right? And you get night cramps, especially if you're low in potassium, which most of you will be low in potassium, more than sodium. And sodium reads high if potassium is low, because one of them allows, whoops, one of them allows water, <laughs> done it again, sorry, I can't see. <laughs> one of them allows water to go into the muscle right, and transmit a, a signal, and the other one goes out of the muscle. Right? And it, as I say, it's the battery fluid for you. And zinc plays that kind of role in the immune system. But yes, it's a very important substance. Very important. Barry, on your right side. Just to follow up with that, are you suggesting that, or is there studies out that you should report the, you know, the salt, the sodium chloride with potassium chloride or calcium chloride? Uh, uh, yes, well, yes, the, you should be taking salt. You have to replace it every day. It's necessary to replace any salts you lose every day. But our diet is such, there's a huge imbalance in vitamins and in minerals, and that's what's causing the problem. Like if you just, do, just eat, for, some of you may be vegetarian, so you don't want to do this, but if you're going to be eating uh, a piece of chicken or a piece of beef, that will contain sodium as well. You know, it, it will be in the animal flesh, right? Biggest problem, is Big Max and Captain what whatever his name is that that chicken guy you know it's, it's Colonel Saunders is it yeah KFC Colonel Saunders is it yeah, I just walked straight past them <laughs> yeah. a good move and a wonderful round of applause for Barry who gave such a fantastically well organised thoughtful research talk thank you so much Barry um, and we got a small token of our very big appreciation for that. And uh, I'm certainly going to definitely look at the K2 and D3 supplement. That sounds great. Yeah, no, uh, really, really wonderful talk. I'm, I'm down, I was just saying to you, I'm going to do the D3 K2 supplement definitely. Uh, I really want to 